Hi, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks. I'm here today to film a recommendation video where I'm going to talk about some of my favorite romances with disability and neurodiversity representation in them. Just to start out, I do want to throw out a disclaimer. I think I love these videos, number one, and I'm on the lookout all the time for videos that recommend books with different kinds of representation, but especially disability and neurodiversity representation in particular is something that I'm frequently looking to read more of. And I do consider myself a disabled person. I have a chronic illness. Obviously, not no one person can speak for all people with disabilities, right? Because there's such a wide range of different kinds. And also the same goes for neurodiversity. There's, you know, there's a wide range of experiences um, of these different things. And even people within one community or with one certain specific diagnosis will have different experiences from each other, obviously. There is no one story that can kind of like encapsulate all of these things. So I did want to explain what I kind of look for specifically and what went into planning out these recommendations because I have actually read a lot of romances with some type of disability or neurodiversity representation over the last couple of years in an effort to build a video like this. In addition to just trying to find books that I personally would really enjoy within that space. And so what I'm looking for when I was putting together these recommendations is some really specific things. And I kind of want to give you that up front so you can decide if this is what you also want to look for in terms of these kinds of romances. So one thing I'm looking for and that I tried to make sure was present in anything that I'm recommending is a genuine happy ending to the story. It's a romance, so I want that that HEA, that HFN, right? Whatever, whatever it looks like, I want that romance to culminate in a happy ending at the end of the story. And so that is true of these books. You're, if you read any of these, you'll find that they all have an HEA or an HFN and they all have a happy, genuinely happy ending. I was also looking for books where ableism or internalized ableism was challenged within the text. So I think there, you know, there are lots of cases where ableism or internalized ableism is present and goes unchallenged for a variety of different reasons. And some books are, you know, still really great and books that I might recommend that don't challenge those things sometimes, depending on the way that it's done and kind of what I think the outcome or the intended outcome was from the author. But specifically in romance, I don't want to be sitting through a bunch of unchallenged ableism or internalized ableism in the text. Personally, I can find that kind of triggering to read. And so really what I'm looking for is, again, a happy, fluffy ending, a good story where this representation is present. It's not glossed over and ableism isn't necessarily like glossed over. There's no pretending that it doesn't exist but it does go challenged within the text at the very least. And then also I tried really hard to curate a collection of books that don't delve deeply into medical trauma or mistreatment of the disabled or neurodiverse characters. There were actually a number of books that I read that didn't end up on this list because they did delve more deeply into that trauma. And there is one book on this list that I'm going to give you a heads up on because it does have some pretty tough elements to it. I still want to recommend it because of kind of the main story and the way that it's handled, I think is handled with care. But I, I do want to let people know I'm trying really hard to curate a list that doesn't delve deeply into medical trauma or mistreatment within like medical or social systems because again, Personally, I don't find that fun to read about when I'm going to a romance and I want, you know, a happily ever after for my disabled characters, um, neurodiverse characters. I don't want to have to deal with them going through a bunch of trauma on page when it's, you know, when it, when you can avoid that in a romance. And then finally, there aren't any speculative books in this list 
partially because it was really hard to find speculative romance that didn't include some type of like magical curing plot line and that's something I really wanted to avoid in this list. I, I don't like that sort of plot device of you're magically cured of your disability or your neurodiversity like cured. There were a number of books that I did read that were on the more speculative side and ended up not making the cut because of this. But if people have recommendations for speculative books with disability rep that doesn't fall into that trap and also avoids the other things I mentioned, I would love to hear about it below. So please do share with me if you have additional recommendations. So now I want to dive right into the recommendations. And the first ones that I'm going to talk about are a set of three books by Helen Huang in the Kiss Quotient series. I specifically own two of these books. So I have the second one, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, and the third one, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. The first book is called The Kiss Quotient. It might be the most popular um like generally of this series and I did enjoy that book but it wasn't a favorite so I didn't end up purchasing a copy to reread whereas these two are my favorites. This one in particular I think is a bit of a um a tough sell for some people which I I totally understand but I did love all three of these books and would recommend them for the representation. Now Specifically, these books follow characters who are on the autism spectrum. Throughout each of the books, the main character, the protagonist, is on the autism spectrum and has been diagnosed or is diagnosed during the book. We have representation of um, men and women who have autism spectrum disorder within these stories. And basically, you know, what Helen Huang does well, I think, is she just really does character well. Each of these stories follows very different storylines. They can be pretty emotional and they they have some complications to them. So I wouldn't say that these books are without uh, intricacy in terms of the, the way that they come together. So even the first book in The Kiss Quotient, we're following a main character who hires a sex worker to basically teach her how to have good sex essentially and because she feels like she doesn't know how to do this um, because of her autism spectrum disorder and her prior relationships not really sort of coming together the way that she wanted them to at the time or feeling like there's something missing in those scenarios so she hires this guy who is a sex worker to come sort of like teach her about this. And so there's a bit of like a weird dynamic there. You know, there's a bit of a power dynamic where you're hiring this person and then they're, you're falling in love with them. They're falling in love with you over the course of the story. So it's not an uncomplicated situation, but I personally think that it was handled well and that the power dynamic was handled well in the story. And the way that it goes with these two characters, the way that these characters kind of come together and learn from each other and support each other, I think is really beautiful. And that's how I felt with all three of these books. This book deals with a basically like potential arranged marriage, kind of a, a woman who is brought to the United States to potentially marry this main character, Kai, who's the son of... Um, this woman who I think is like a, a restaurant entrepreneur, kind of like a big deal restaurant entrepreneur. She goes to Vietnam, she meets Esme in Vietnam, and she likes Esme right away and invites her back to the United States to live with her son basically and like test run being his wife. And again, it's like kind of a crazy plot. There's a lot of weird power dynamics and there are some things that happen in the story that are quite unbelievable. But personally, I really loved Esme and Kai's journey to each other and their relationship and the way that they came together over that period of time. And then also how the book ends, I think kind of handles things pretty well in terms of them ultimately having that HEA by the end of the story. So I really loved this book. And again, I thought that the representation was pretty strong here. 
The final book in this series is The Heart Principle and I do want to mention this is the book that I said at the beginning has some pretty heavy elements to it. So one thing that comes up in here is end of life caregiving for a parent and it is that is intense to read about. It's a very intense part of the story and our main character is Anna and she is really going on a journey of self-discovery from the beginning of this book because she doesn't yet have a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder when you meet her at the beginning of this book and she also has some additional mental health things going on just in general related to her life and her profession and then a very difficult event goes on in her family and her father ends up in essentially like home-based hospice care kind of long-term caregiving situation for someone who is at the end of their life essentially and she becomes very invested in that and involved in that even though her family in general hasn't been very supportive and, and doesn't tend to be very supportive or understanding of who she is except for her father of course who she is caregiving for at the time so this is a really really heavy book there's a lot of very heavy elements and there is definitely medical trauma depicted on page and so I did want to give a heads up for that. That being said, if you're looking for a more sentimental or heavier romance that does deal with mental health representation, I think that this is really nicely handled and the author's note also adds a lot of context to the story. So Helen Huang, my first author read out of the gate that I would recommend and that I will continue to read from because I've just really loved all everything she's put out so far. I've loved. Then I have a historical romance. I have The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. And this is a romance that follows a duke. His name is the Duke of Ashbury, I believe. And this woman, Emma, who is like a seamstress dressmaker, she shows up on his doorstep with a dress and she's like, yo, dude, this was supposed to be paid for. I think she was making it for a wedding to his fiance or something. I can't remember exactly how he's involved in it, but somehow he's involved in the making of this dress. She's coming to him and saying, I need to get paid for the work that I did. And he ends up propositioning her to see if she will basically marry him and produce an heir. And then they don't have to continue to live together or like be with each other beyond that, but he just needs an heir to his home and his property and it's like a marriage of convenience situation. Now in this book the Duke of Ashbury has served in a war previously and he has a lot of facial scarring and uh, disfigurement from his time in the war and there is quite a bit of internalized ableism in terms of his feelings about his scarring and his disfigurement. It's very much related to why he kind of propositions this woman to give him an heir but not be with him in a relationship because personally he thinks of himself as unlovable at this point because of that scarring. It's a It can be kind of hard to read that I think at times so I did want to give a heads up to that that there's that internalized ableism component to the story but I do think that Tessa Dare handles this nicely and it doesn't go unchallenged in the story. A lot of this book is about him realizing that he can, he is lovable and Emma falling in love with him and then them kind of developing that relationship and him learning to understand how um, someone else can love him even though he feels that his disfigurement has created this huge barrier to any woman being able to love him. And I think it was just nicely done. I mean, Tessa Dare is a fun time in general in romance and historical romance, pretty spicy, so definitely fun for those kinds of elements. And I would definitely recommend this book for people who are looking for some good uh, representation. I've also heard that she's written some other books with disability representation, but I haven't read them yet, so I didn't want to mention them here, but definitely something that I will check out in the future because I really do like Tessa Dare. 
Then I have Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. This is another kind of more contemporary romance that follows Reese and Jason. I've talked about this quite a bit. Um, this was one of my favorite romances that I read last year and it's just really cute setup. Jason is a veteran. He's returned from his time in the military and he's going to college to finish his bachelor's degree. He ends up in a class, a literature class, with Reese's mom, who's a professor of literature, I believe, at this school. And Reese is the teaching assistant in this class. She's the graduate teaching assistant. She's also like a graduate student at the school. And they end up kind of butting heads in this class, but also immediately sparks are flying and they're attracted to each other. And the representation in this book is that Jason, after being in the war, has lost one of his legs. And so he has limb difference, he has a prosthetic leg. And I think it was just handled so well in this story. It doesn't, you know, it, not in any way is it like the center of the story, but it is obviously like a fact of his life and a fact of his interaction with other people and specifically his sex life. And so it, it is handled nicely during sex scenes in particular in this book where there's discussion of like having sex with limb difference and dealing with prosthetics and sort of how do you navigate that. And I thought that that was really well done. And the relationship is great and steamy. Christina C. Jones really doesn't fail <laughs> in that aspect with me ever. So I would highly recommend this book. I thought it was just very well done. Then I have uh, one that is one of my personal favorites. This is Always Only You by Chloe Lisa. And this is part of the Bergman Brothers series. I think it's the third book in this series, but I read it as the first book I'd ever read from her. And I think it holds up great as a standalone. And basically it follows a main character, Frankie, who is, I believe she's like a social media marketing person, like public relations person for this hockey team. She also has autism spectrum disorder and she also has arthritis and walks with a cane and mobility device. She has chronic pain and other things related to that that get discussed in the story. And she ends up in a relationship with Ren, who is one of the Bergman brothers, and he's a hockey player on the team that she works for. And this is just like a really cute romance. Ren is really a sweetheart of uh, a hero in this story. He's just a really sweet guy, um, a big kind of mushy hockey player that wants to take care of her. There are some scenes where she gets really sick and he is doing caregiving, which I thought were just so cute in the story. And Frankie's also like really a powerhouse. She knows how to advocate for herself. She's really developed a lot of skills and techniques to kind of take care of herself. And also in doing that, she's kind of like erected some barriers around her heart <laughs> and is a little bit afraid of other people taking care of her. And so there are some things she has to work through there that I think are very relatable to people who deal with chronic illness in particular and maybe, you know, have dealt with medical trauma, dealt with people not believing them in the past. Um, it was very relatable in that way while still being like a pure romance with comedic elements and lots of fun, kind of goofy, good times in it. So that's why it's one of my favorites because I think that it just handles the mix of things so nicely in this story. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend that one. I, again, it's like one of my personal favorites and I think I definitely want to read more in this series because I believe that the series includes a lot of different representations of disability. And there are other things that pop up in this series that I think um, I, I want to delve into further in the future. And then my final recommendation is a little bit out of left field. I don't know that everyone would say this is a romance necessarily, but I think it can be pitched as a literary romance. So this is Just by Looking at Him by Ryan O'Connell. I read this last year. I absolutely adored this book. This was one of my favorite books of last year. Like I said, this is it's more literary fiction. It really is following our main character, Elliot, as he's exploring his relationship to sexuality and love in the context of being a disabled person with cerebral palsy. And 
I think that it just does a lot with that exploration. And if you are looking for some of the, maybe like the goofiness, the funniness of a romance, definitely some interesting sex scenes, and then a budding, blossoming, blooming romance by the end of the story. Uh, I do think that this book delivers that. There's a lot of other things going on. Like I said, it, you know, it's literary. It is dealing with disability in the context of work and maybe feeling like you aren't fulfilled in your, your workplace as well as your personal life. Um, feeling like you're kind of like floundering. There's a little bit of like millennial sad boy stuff going on in here, but the book itself is hilarious. The sort of tone and the voiciness of Elliot, I find hilarious. And I just thought that it was a really fun, sometimes very awkward, good time. And it does also, I would say, have a happy ending. So I, I don't think that's spoiling the book to go into it knowing that this character is going to get a happy ending. But I think the journey of him getting there and the journey he goes on to understand his relationship to his own disability, his internalized ableism that maybe he hasn't dealt with very much previously is just really rich and there's a lot going on. So this is another one that I would very highly recommend. Those are my recommendations for today. Please, please let me know if you have additional recommendations. I'm again, I'm always on the lookout for these kinds of books. I've read probably like three or four times what I actually recommended today. And unfortunately, there's a lot of not so great rep that I find out there and things where there's just a lot of triggering elements or you're dealing so much with medical related trauma that it becomes not as much of a fun romance. And so this list, I really wanted to focus on things that are like genuinely fun romances, sometimes with heavy elements, but the romance is still a main component of the story. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your recommendations and I hope that you're doing well. Bye.